A new flaw could create a large botnet. Stan, I'm hearing some kind of some rumblings about a new uh, remote com command execution problem with some home routers. Yes. Um, so I was pointed to a blog on uh, Sentinel Labs, and they discovered a vulnerability in the implementation of something known as NetUSB uh, within um, a variety, actually, of routers. I think they started looking at Netgear routers, but once they looked a little bit deeper, they found there's a library uh, that's uh, written by actually a third party that a lot of routers reuse. Um, <clears throat> the, pro the, the purpose of the library is actually to provide like USB functionality. So when you plug in, let's say like your printer over USB, it makes it work via the network as if you and your computer still thinks it's like connected by uh, um, uh, uh, via like the USB cable to the computer directly. So it's uh, honestly, if you have to read the research to get the, the details and to really appreciate what the security researchers did, it's not exactly a trivial bug, but uh, not trivial to execute necessarily, but for the right person who knows what they're doing, um, it's certainly something uh, within their uh, skill set that they'll be able to do. So a couple of things that I found interesting, you know, they provided a timeline of events of how they did it. So it, it looks like, um, I always look, like to look at timelines to understand like when this, uh, did this idea come to be that a security researcher, you know, found the vulnerability to when they're ready to disclose it. So it looks like they started their research um, like April of last year. Um, and uh, they, around September of last year, so maybe five months later, they were ready to disclose it. Um, and it took about a month or so, uh, or I guess a few months here, um, until the the vendor of the of this library code was able to patch it, distribute it to all of the different uh, router manufacturers out there, um, and for them to confirm that at least um, like the Netgear devices were patched. Now, one of the problems with this is that um, you know they suspect that there are going to be some Soho routers that people buy where the manufacturer is not necessarily going to go and update this library code, um, and it might leave devices vulnerable. Uh, so you know naturally, what are some recommendations? So the first thing is there is um, uh, this uh, I guess this vulnerability open support twenty thousand five on TCP. And that's where the flow could exist. So one thing is to just uh, possibly just scan your personal router um, for that port and see if it's open on your internet side of your router. If it's not, then you might be okay. And finally, uh, really do look for the latest firmware for whatever routers you do use. Um, routers, you know, I think most people, especially in the small office, home office space, might not realize, but that router is very important to your security uh, posture. I think we take it for granted a lot in the enterprise space, but now that every person you know in their household has become a network administrator because they have so many devices, you really have to take the security of your devices seriously, and you have to follow uh, all the best practices uh, for uh, uh, for securing uh, your home router uh, so your connection stays secure. So did you say, did I hear you say, Stan, that as far as you've seen that Netgear is the only one who has come in confirmed as patching it? That's what was in the article. I haven't checked uh, if the other uh, router manufacturers have followed suit, but according to the Sentinel Labs write-up here, uh, they made sure that uh, this uh, K codes, which is the, uh, uh, which wrote this firmware library, uh, distributed to all of the vendors. And they had confirmed that sometime in December of November. Um, the other thing they mentioned is that they felt like the exploitation of this vulnerability uh, was difficult to uh, achieve. So there were a lot of different uh, things that had to be just right in order to get that RCE, uh, and they have not seen in the wild exploitation. One thing that I did want to share when we get to the internet weather part is what does scanning activity look like on this port uh, uh, 20,005? Uh, so I'll have some uh, visuals later. Uh, for uh, for exploring this activity and seeing uh, 
uh, seeing what's happened over time. Well, oh, great. Yeah, it definitely is uh, fortunate that in order to exploit this particular bug, it's got you not a lot of, uh, it, it's very, very difficult to do so because it's got to be less than 32 bytes. It's got to be sprayable remotely. And even then, you have to have something of value in that 32 bytes in order for, you know, like a pointer or something for the attacker to then actually use and, and, and get somewhere more useful and, and, and profit from that activity, which they, they do think is going to be a very, very difficult thing in most cases. So what I'm more interested in is, is where this library may have been used in other devices right outside of the, you know, Soho router space, you know, where is it embedded in printers or other devices that are also allowing USB connections into them um, that are maybe inside of corporate networks? Um, because again, why build it when you can buy it or license it, right? And it's that, that classic engineering kind of, uh, you know, build versus buy conundrum, right? And so you're going to see, I think, other vendors come out with patches related to this vulnerability months from now, because that's when it finally works through their ecosystem and their, their update process. I agree. That's scary. And I appreciate that you definitely <laughs> want those printers to be vulnerable so you can do your job the best, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> no, 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 no evilness. We have to be, we have to be nice. <laughs> That's, but I think your your point though to Stan is 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 keep update with your you know all of your software right whether it be Internet of Things your routers your phones your PCs you just never know just make sure you update it and keep I mean I I feel like I'm preaching to the choir but it's just like we've been saying this over and over again a broken record you know update 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 yep. I, I just checked my Android phone earlier today and I had a had a uh, Android 12 was pushed to it. I didn't even realize it. I didn't even think about it until I just checked it. So it's just, we just got to get in that habit. I think what makes well, this one, one the... really more dangerous, sorry, Mike, is uh, just the fact that it potentially is exposed, you know, on the WAN side. Um, and that's really where people have to be most concerned about it uh, and really just check their own connection. I was just going to say, it's amazing how mundane most cybersecurity mitigation really is. It doesn't require any mm -hmm. crazy solutions or anything like this. It just requires diligence and a willingness to continually stay up on top of patches, which is no small feat. I, I'm, I'm not trivializing that challenge because it is a, a significant one, but it's not exactly, uh, you know, cutting edge, right? <laughs> I mean, it's just basic blocking and tackling. I think one of the things that comes into play is really um, like, again, in the Soho space, it's like a different type of network administrator. It's the home user, you know, and so they might not yet be in that mindset of patching. So and I, I think some routers have that option available where it's auto patching like the Androids. But I think for a lot of people, they don't even think like, oh, do I have the latest router? Do I have the latest firmware? Like this thing is the workhorse of my internet connection. And especially now where everyone is isolating and a lot of people are working from home, that internet connection has to be secure and, and you know, protected. Um, so uh, I guess just one more aspect to the patching. So yeah, for us, you know, it's so trivial. I think one of the things that worries me is that it just might not be trivial for others and um, just people might not even think the router is something I need to update, but it really is. And the fact that the router can also go out of style or out of trend, um, you know, just like a car, right? Like you don't have a car for uh, 30, 40 years, uh, unless it's a very special situation. Um, but usually you, you kind of have to trade off to get the latest features to the, get the latest safety equipment and things like that. And I think the same uh, applies for routing equipment in this small office, home office space. No, absolutely. I mean, that life cycle issue there is is really important because, you know, I mean, they're not terribly expensive, but they're not exactly cheap either at a, you know, hundred and change a pop kind of a thing. You go, oh, this thing's end of life. What does that mean? It still seems to be working. Why, why do I need to go spend another hundred bucks, right? I could do a lot of other things with that money. Yep. So I'll give you a motivation. Priorities. So the motivation <laughs> is that on the weekends, I tear apart firmware looking for 
old firmware looking for bugs um, for fun. So there's lots of people who have fun this way. And hopefully that's encouragement enough for you know everyone out there to kind of uh, <laughs> upgrade their equipment or make sure that they, they're um, uh, thinking about upgrading even the, the hardware.